Hey dudes, today I wanna to talk about changing your session startup time, which is another way to say changing the time code that is inside of your Pro Tools session. So let's jump right into it and see what I'm talking about. So let's first identify what the error of this session is. So right here on the video file, you will see that there is a time code burn-in. Now, this is something you need to ask the editor or assistant editor to actually burn into the video. And this is very important when you're trying to check this against what's inside of your Pro Tools session. But for this particular session, it is 00595000. The first number is the hour, then the minute, then the second, then the frame. So remember that number 00595000. Here is what is inside of our actual Pro Tools session. It's just zeros flat across the board. So basically what we need to do is change this time code to match what the time code of the video is. So all we have to do to do that is go to setup and session, or if you wanna get fancy with it, you can go command and two on the number pad and it will toggle this window on and off. Remember, not this two, but this two. Okay, so what we're seeing is the session start is all zeros, exactly what we described before. When instead we want it to be five nine and then five zero. So I'm gonna show you something. If I hit enter right now, it'll wanna change it to five nine zero zero and it will come up with this box, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. So let me show you how I avoid jumping the gun, so to speak, because we needed this to be 5950. So let me just hit cancel. Usually what I do is I type in the first number, 59, then I just hit the right arrow key, 50. Now I can hit enter, and we can deal with this error code. So this is saying unable to maintain the time code locations. It's basically just going to say click OK to maintain relative position. So remember that phrase. We're going to come back to that in a minute. But for now, I'm just going to hit OK. And I will zoom out. And we can verify pretty quickly here. We still have the same time code number that is burnt into the QuickTime. Can't change that. But now here is our time code for Pro Tools, 00595000. So we have successfully matched the time code in Pro Tools to the video burn-in on our QuickTime file. So good job. So here's another possibility that might happen to you while you're working on this. Uh, we got off pretty easy on that first example, but for now I'm going to do my same thing here where I go back in and go, Type in zero, zero, hit the right key, five, nine, five, zero. So now when I hit enter, a new error message pops up. And it asks you if the clips should maintain their time code position or their positions relative to the start of the session. So remember earlier I was saying, remember this maintain relative position or maintain time code. So I'm gonna zoom all the way out and I'm gonna show you what happens if we hit maintain time code. It's probably gonna be the one that you use the least, but it is gonna keep the time code and move everything over to where the time code is now in the session, effectively moving everything it's maybe something you wanna do, but not all of the time, because you probably want all of your clips and movie to start at the beginning of the session. So that didn't really do what we wanted to do to fix the problem. So let's Command Z. And I will pop this in again. So I'm just typing in 005950, the exact same thing I did before. I'm hitting Enter. So the same error code pops up, but this time we are going to select maintain relative position, which is probably the one that you are gonna select the most, which means it's gonna keep all the clips where they are in the timeline, but just change the time code number. So let's click that. 
and we did it. So our 5950 is always gonna be on the video. That's what the burn-in is. And there we go. We have now successfully changed our time code start by using maintain relative position. A couple of other things before we close the session setup window. Uh, just as a reminder, we always do 48 and 24 and wave for sample rate, bit depth, and audio format when we are working in sound. If you have a different format you're using for music or something else, just make sure that these match what your project needs to be. And in this particular session, the time cone rate was 24 flat, but you might have 23976 or maybe it's a European format like 25 or something like that. But this is also something to check in the session setup window. So we're moving the time code around, we're checking the sample rate, bit depth, etc. And we're also making sure that our time code rate is the rate that our project is. All right, so let me explain a little bit why we do this. So basically, before any movie starts, we always have to have some kind of countdown. Sometimes there's bars and tones. And in particular, what's really important is that there is what's called a two pop and a first frame of picture. So here is our two pop. It's two seconds before the first frame of picture. So 59, 58, which is displayed now properly in both our Pro Tools timecode and the burn in of the video file. And that's great. This is a great place that you wanna check everything because you have this one pop that happens exactly at the two pop. And usually what I like to do is make a marker. So I'm gonna hit enter. It brings up my memory location and I'm gonna call that two pop. Maybe like that, maybe capitalize it, mess around with it, make it make sense for you. Hit okay. So that is one important marker that we're gonna put in our session. And then of course the other really important marker is that we're gonna find our first frame of picture. So if I'm using nudge right here, I often do this and you'll see that both time codes are reflecting the exact same number, which is great. And then at the exact one hour mark is always where we have the first frame of picture. So I'm gonna hit enter for my memory location, drag it over here so you can see it, and we'll call this FFOP, so first frame of picture. So those are two really great markers to get started uh, with and setting up your session. Now keep in mind, every project might be slightly different. So whoever you're working for, whoever the post supervisor is, they're gonna supply what these numbers are. So basically all you're doing is just following these and checking in with the editor and the rest of the post team to say, where does the session start? Do we have our two pop? And is our first frame of picture start at the one hour mark? Of course, if you have a different turnover, you should follow those rules, but these are very common rules that we follow when doing sound in post-production for film. So that's basically it. I've taught you guys how to change your session startup time, and I also sprinkled in a couple little other goodies like checking your time code rate to make sure that it matches exactly what the project is. I would check this menu every time you open up a project because it's very important to make sure that your session is set up properly. So there you go. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you get to use it to fix your projects in the future. And until next time, later dudes. <laughs>